Hey Bella, let's go outside. Let's go outside, bro. Come on. Hello everybody, welcome back. We're gonna get on the move today and probably end up in another state soon. I don't know if the coachman's gonna start though. That little that little issue. Uh, might have to jump start it. Uh kind of killed the battery a little bit in it. Well, at least John's car over here is in the right position. We gotta give it a jump. Uh <laughs> it's yeah, we're getting ready to leave, and um, what happened was, you know, I got charging cables up front for uh, some for what I'm driving, like the dash cam, my phone, uh, something for walkie-talkie. You know, I got different charging cables that run off the engine, um, you know, the power port from the engine battery. Uh, for, again, for when I'm driving, that's okay. And then some other ones over on this side from this battery bank that run... Like, uh, with the inverter, you know, it's my laptop, some other charging cables uh, coming from this side. So, of course, they're replenished with the solar. So, that's uh, that system's replenishing all the time. This is not if it hasn't been running in a couple of days. So, what happened was John's been running, charging his phone, and it's my fault. I got to, you know, there's cables that go this way and that way, and it's a little nest, uh, rat's nest stop here at cables, really. You know how charging cables go. Uh so john we didn't catch it right uh, right away like i say it's my fault so. and um he's been charging his phone for a couple of days on the off the engine battery well i have that digital thing in there that he happened to notice that seemed to be dropping and dropping and to the point where i think it's down below 12 volts the battery's down like 11 8 and that's borderline it may or may not start if, uh, <laughs> Yeah, got jumper cables and up here and John has a said that's not a problem. So uh we're gonna see what happens here. Here, let's go ahead and plug this thing back in and uh see where it's at. It looks like it's recovered a little bit. Up to about twelve volts even. Twelve, twelve one. It should start. Um you know, normally full charge it should be about twelve seven or twelve eight. So it's a little low. Of course, the coachman always needs a little, after it's been sitting for a couple of days, it needs, uh, it's an old carburetor. Some of you already know this. Uh, the fuel kind of leaks down out of it or evaporates uh, quickly. Uh, I'm going to give it that, that initial turnover to get gas pumped back up to it. And i got to do a little trick here, pump the gas a few times, and we'll try it again. should fire right back up. Come on, girl. Oh yeah. Go ahead and let it warm up. We're not leaving. We're not le we're not leaving just yet, but uh good let it warm up and shut it off. We'll finish getting ready. Come on, stay run. He's a little cold blooded. There we go. Get some good voltage going back into that battery. Well, there goes John. Won't see him for a while. He refuses to go any further north where it gets cold. He's going to stay here in the south for a while. And now do his DoorDash thing from city to city. Hang out where it's warmer. He will probably come to the north uh, maybe about three or four weeks. Is everybody ready to go? I just turned on my um, uh, turn pressure monitor thing. Uh, that's weird. Well, maybe keep an eye on it going up. Once it get down the road and the tires all warm up, maybe it'll figure itself out. Oh, thank you. I gotta do that too. We'll be a minute. All right, we'll take another uh, step or two to the north. Yeah, so we did end up a couple days ago coming back here to Honey Hill, and it's been absolutely peaceful and nice here. Uh, just the internet really, really stinks. Sometimes you get a little bit. Okay, I think uh, everybody's ready now. But, uh, yeah, we might have to make a stop here today or one of these days pretty soon. It might be time to start doing some generator shopping for more than one reason. But, uh, we'll get to that. I don't know if that'll be today, but that's going to be coming soon, I think. Well, this is a pretty dang nice ride through the country. 
as opposed to the interstates. We have like 30 miles to go. Yeah, it's a pretty nice little stretch for just a two lane road like this. Uh, you know, I would rather go uh, at a slower pace. You know, the speed limit is 45. You know, I'm happy to do 45 to 30 miles. I don't care. I'm not in that big a hurry. I'd much rather see, take these kind of roads and see, you know, like signs like yard sales or fresh eggs or local honey for sale or, you know, that kind of stuff. You just don't see that on the interstates, right? Uh, yeah, you get to snoop around a little bit more on these kind of roads. Uh, never know what you come across. Yeah, but I, I like this pace of travel so much better. Uh, you know, we'll do the interstates. We'll have our share of that here uh, at some point. I can enjoy this while I can. Yeah, we did a little pit stop. I had to do a little tire check. I think one of Lodge's uh, tire pressure things had a hiccup. Thanks, Circle K, for just using the parking lot for a minute. Speaking of tire pressure, the uh, tires on the Focus are uh, doing okay. They're supposed to be at 32. So, you know, just a, just a little bit light. And the one on the, uh, the Coachman, it's pretty dim. Uh, I don't know if there. I should look and see if there's a brightness setting. Uh, I, I can read it, but it sure is hard for the camera uh, camera to read it. But uh, they're looking normal too. About 65 in the front, about 70 in the back. Four tires. And that's also running a little lighter than I think I originally set them. I'll have to go top off all my tires one of these days here soon. It's not bad, but it's not my ideal setting. It's not where I actually like them. I think I set my tires at 70 in the front and 75 in the back. So I I think maybe I set them at 65 and 70. But I think it was 70 and 75. So they might be down by five pounds in the four months we've been traveling. Mm, uh, maybe. I, I just don't remember. <laughs> anyway, they're good they're good where they're at. Uh, at least for now. No crisis. But uh, let's go ahead and get on off the road here a little ways, and uh, let's just do that. I think our little ride in the country is about over. I think we're, we're going to cut into a town and then not much further. Uh, we'll be over to Interstate 26. Uh, things tend to get a little busier over there. So uh, it's been a very relaxing drive here this morning. We start heading up Interstate 26. It won't be long. We will be. We're getting close to the Appalachians. <laughs> so that's gonna have us so much of a different feel to it. Okay, okay, GPS. That's gonna have such a different feel to it um, than what we've been travel, how we've been traveling, the landscape over the last few months. Now getting into the Appalachians kind of excited but yeah start getting up in the elevations a little further north you know the trees will be more bare they'll say yeah oh yeah it is still on the tail end of winter oh it's officially it is spring uh, but it'll still seem like the tail end of winter a little further north we're not far from that and we just pulled into this busy flying J got gas oh it's nice the ones that have the RV lanes they're, it's not as congested as getting in the regular auto lanes and stuff. Just, just easier. Pulled over here to the uh, pump, out of the uh, dump station. Yeah, they got propane at this location. And the good old dump station, take care of that. The, uh, it's nice this one, you don't have to go in and pay. I love these outdoor automated ones. You just swipe the cart out here, bang, it unlocks the cap. Away we go. Oh, oh, dummy me. <laughs> You know, with the Flying J card, it's only $3 to dump. I think if I would have paid for it inside, uh, I don't know. It's too late. You know, I, I paid 10 bucks. This is the first automated one I've seen in the Flying J. I don't even know that's an option because there's no place, even if they gave you a code inside, there's no place to put a code. So I don't know how that would work. You know what? It's done. Tags are done. So be it. I hate when that happens. Dang it. 
all right nothing left to do to except to fill the fresh water tank up and get seven gallons extra and we'll be done and we have to go park somewhere and wait till aja or uh, jeff uh, does his and aja does hers and we'll all be back on the road again all right we're done while we sit here and wait i did turn on the generator and the roof air is running so it's kind of warm the air conditioner is not going to run for a while here a couple more days yeah yeah we're going to the cold leaving the warm and going to the cold um in past years people have said you're that you're don't be in a hurry to get back it's still cold up here and i know i'm from pennsylvania i've been all my life you know quite a few years and i know what i know what the weather's like in april so uh oh it's not quite april though oh, by the time i get there it should be the first week of april i think so uh, i know what you know i know what to expect and i looked at the extended forecast up there so it's just going from it's actually quite warm to here today in south carolina and go up there where it's uh not cold but the cool to quite cool for a little bit but the weather's changing quickly so it'll i can't wait till may what they say up there is april showers bring may flowers so april showers you know the snow's pretty much might get a still a a, a strange a stray snow flurry maybe maybe a light frost but um not too much of that it's it's wrapping up up there fine weather ahead so in the meantime we'll exercise the air conditioner a little bit and then it'll get a rest for a short while yeah oh, that generator thing uh, we'll get back to that in a second at some point here all right Right up there is Interstate 26, uh, east to Charleston, or west to Columbia. Actually, it's more north than it is west. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's jump on the interstate for a while, get cruising, get a chunk of miles in. these leaves spring is you know, comes early in the south it comes about a month earlier than it does up in Pennsylvania uh, well actually probably four four to six weeks before we see this kind of green coming out so uh, I, I, I'm loving the green I'm loving the green there's gonna be an absence for a little bit but then it'll be back I don't think we'll be making it to North Carolina today uh, maybe tomorrow <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know where the, how far the state line is. Uh, we've got a little ways to go. That we're, uh, I think we're just going to stop in Orangeburg. Yeah, hang out there for the rest of the afternoon and the evening. And probably get back on the road tomorrow. I think our next step will be we'll be starting to see some elevation. So I think we're only in the three or three to four hundred feet of elevation. And I think by the time we get up. I forget the name of the town now. We're like 1,500 to 2,000 feet. So we're going to start seeing some elevation pretty soon. And with that, a little change in the weather. Nice. All right. Here it is. Good old Cracker Barrel. Uh, I'm kind of hungry for a barrel, a barrel burger. I think that's what's for dinner tonight. Okay, about this generator shopping business. The van's gonna need its own generator. And it's gonna leave this one in the coachman. It's kind of permanently mounted, semi-permanently. You know, late last summer, I put that, uh, fixed that rack, modified that rack, put that champion in here. And you know, thing is, it has seen better days. Uh, I mean, it still runs great. Well, wait, <laughs> well, it will it will with some love 
I think it's due for uh, carburetor to be clean, a new fuel filter, because it's starting to stumble uh, when it's on a light load. When I uh, do something like run the air conditioner or make a cup of coffee, when it's under a load, it smooths out. But then on a light load, it just, you know, the, uh, the idle is just up and down, up and down. So it, it needs it needs service. It is about due for an oil change. So this has worked out great. But uh, this generator I've had for, mm, I think just over 10 years now. It has been fantastic. I've only, I've only, actually about five years uh, ago, I did have to clean the carburetor one time on it. And now it's been probably good for another five. And uh, I can just tell that's, that's just a symptom. I, I know that'll clear it up. But I don't want to have to, it, oh yeah, and when I installed it, I, you know, I got that adapter and I run the, uh, the exhaust out the side and, you know, it's just strapped in there good. Um, I don't want to be taking it out and it's not the easiest task. I mean, it's not bad. I have to just take a couple of bolts out. This whole thing pivot, that tray pivots down and then it slides out some um, easier that way. Uh, you know, if I'm going to take a trip in the van this summer and, um, or then another you know week or so decide to take the coachman out uh, i don't want to be putting this generator in and out in and out anytime i switch vehicles this is in there it works great it's gonna be a permanent fixture in here but you know taking its age into consideration uh it wouldn't hurt to have a backup generator anyway so i'm gonna get a smaller i think a 2000 or 2200 maybe a 2500 they're all the same uh, case same physical size but you know if this one were to decide to say hey i'm done <laughs> Like I say, it's been around. I've drugged this thing around the country a bunch. Um, I do have the backup one if this goes out. But hopefully there's still this thing still has a lot of service left in it. Uh, but I don't like I say, I don't want to be taking it in and out. We're going to get a smaller one for on the back of the van. And I'll just have that, uh, yeah, for van usage. And we'll, we'll just give this one some love when we get back. Uh, and I think it's going to be okay. Now, I think I'm in a position where, you know, we're going to be back to the garage in probably no more than two weeks. Certainly no more than three. We're close enough, and this thing's running bad enough right now. I should demonstrate it. <laughs> um, like I said, just under a low load. But we're close enough to being back that I wouldn't be afraid to go ahead and pick one up. Uh, and Tractor Supply carries the champions. I think, I don't know if Lowe's does. Or Home Depot. I don't know if they carry them or not. I know Tractor Supply carries the Champions. I'm thrilled with the Champion. Yeah, this one's been through my travel trailer, my the Tioga, the Bounder for a while until I put a bigger one in it, permanent, permanent, more permanently, and sold it. When I sold it, it went with it. And then uh, because at that time, this I was using this on the van and put the bigger one uh, semi-permanent in the bounder and it just lives in the bounder now and sold like i say sold it with it in it um and so now this has been through the coach this has been through four rvs and drug around the country plenty and uh it's still doing great i, I know with some love it'll be fine um anyway so i'm not i wouldn't be afraid to just go ahead and pick one up uh, if this thing really the carburetor gets any dirtier <laughs> yeah as a matter of fact, the other day it stumbled really bad. It's, it's done that twice now. It's under a, a real heavy load. The air conditioner and coffee and running like near ma its max capacity. Um, I think it was start room for fuel and it did stumble uh, pretty bad. Then it, it didn't die out completely. Uh, it was like a big hiccup. And then it kind of it recovered and it was all right. So um, anyway, if, anyway, I'm, I think I'm ready to get a... Uh, get another generator we'll get a fresh one and, and uh, we'll get that on the van and yeah i might pick that up and just i could haul it in the fiesta uh, put it in the back of the fiesta somewhere or something and uh i'll have it if i need it and just i don't know <laughs> well but i'm ready to start shopping again and pick one up somewhere but i'll show you what this thing does so i mean i could have started i guess i could have started it out there it's got the electric start. I will miss that because the smaller ones don't have the uh, the remote start. There it goes. All right, here, I don't know if you can hear that. Okay.
So yeah, that's a that's a very fuel system issue. Um, when they kind of surge like that. So now what it happens? What happens is now if I get a pot of coffee going here, just give me a second. Okay, I have I have my coffee my coffee pot ready to start. it. Okay, hear it? Stumble, stumble, stumble. Um, all right, let's, let's turn this on. Okay, probably heard that from in here. See, I mean, it works fine, makes power, runs smooth under a load. You just do for a tune up. So, anyway, that's what the uh, the whole generator uh, situation is right now. Uh, I'll get that taken care of and at some point get back up Pennsylvania, get things rolling. Get the van put back together, put the battery back in it, turn the turn the uh, breaker back on for the solar. Air con or the uh, I'll have air con it has air conditioning and my fr the refrigerator and the TV and you know bring the turn all the power, all the systems back on for the summer. So go do something. We got plans. Uh, we got a project. We got a project lined up soon for the van to be going somewhere and uh how should i put it uh I'm gonna develop a little camp area two of them actually so looking forward to getting back up to pennsylvania that's all we got for this video thanks for uh, hanging out coming along and uh we'll be back soon i'm gonna go have my coffee i'll see you